I am very, very excited to have our speaker this morning come. Um, it is somebody who I have had the utmost of respect for for the entire time that I have uh, known him. And now I get to call him a part of my family also. He has been pretty much every position inside a church, a kids pastor, associate pastor, lead pastor. And now he is currently our, our district's Christian education di di director. Um, so please welcome my father-in-law, Pastor Vint Norris. Amen, Scotty. Love you. Don't you love Scotty and Melissa? Amen. There's one thing I'm not as a grandfather. <laughs> Go to the water fountain. Come on, somebody. <laughs> somebody show that boy where it is. Amen. <laughs> it's good to be at the house of the Lord with you. Amen. Y'all my kind of people say amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you look good today. Amen. This is a great church, the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a great church, and it's a great day. Can, you get, can I get an amen? amen? Get your Bibles out and turn to Matthew chapter 25. As you're turning there, is it Brother Daniel? Um, is that right? Did I say it right? Brother Daniel didn't do one announcement today. He didn't tell us how to become a member. Because all that food y'all got going on, I'm ready to join. <laughs> Barbecue and everything. It's just wonderful. Amen. Brother Greg um, and Donna Dawson, I talked to them in recent days with the loss of her family member. And I, um, uh, he uh, specifically said to bring greetings to y'all. I told him I would. And I um, love Brother Greg. I love him with all my heart. Amen and amen. Sister Lynn, as you're turning to Matthew chapter 25, when Sister Lynn... Um, shared about the cookbook I remember. My uh, WM lady, Sister Boone, came to me in Orchard way back in the day. I was a young whippersnapper youth pastor and um, a little mischievous at times. And so I submitted a, and, um, um, one of the cooking, what do you call it? Yeah, recipe. I put it in there. I just made it up. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so I sure hope y'all screen them. <laughs> I asked Melissa to send me the email to it. <laughs> I may strike again. Come <laughs> on, somebody. <laughs> amen. Well, amen. Matthew chapter 25, as I was on the way down, the Lord began to speak to me, uh, something I want to remind the church about. But before I do, I, um, I have a quick word, I believe it's for somebody in the house of the Lord before we get into Matthew chapter 25. Uh, in Psalms, I think it's chapter 105, it says that the word of the Lord tested the man of God. Joseph, it tested him. The word of the Lord did. And um, I was prepared to preach that word, but I felt like the Lord said that's for somebody specific. And so he put something on my heart that I'll share in a few moments. But that word simply means that what he went through, the dream that he had, and the destiny upon his life, someone here, everything that he went through was because it was a test from God. It wasn't the result of his brother's actions. It wasn't something that just happened in, uh, by chance in life. It was by the word of of the Lord and whoever it is in this house and it could even be Ozark you received a word from God about what it is you're to do the plan of God and the destiny upon your life when you receive that word you will be tested he was tested he went through a pit and he went through a terrible prison he went through times of testing in his walk and yet it was the word of God, the scripture says, that tested him. That word is where we get the word testa. It's like a refiner's bowl. It is there you are purified. 
It is the precious metal that comes to the top and the dross is taken away. It is the testing that prepares you for the palace. It is the pit. It is the prison. It is the testing that you go through in your life that is preparing you for where God wants to bring you to and what He wants to do through you. I don't know who I'm talking to. It could be a businessman. You've been through a lot of tests. You felt like you heard from God. You felt like you had instructions about what was going on. And it seems like everything that's gone on is not about the Word, but it's contradiction to what you thought you heard. You've been going through a test. It's only a test. Keep persevering because I promise you God will bring you out of your pit or your testing, your refiner's bowl, and He will bring you into the promise. Trust God. Trust God in your testing. Be found faithful. Be found faithful because He needs to change you in the test. He needs to change some things in you and me when we're going through the hardest times of life. And God help us to get our eyes on us and not everybody else around us and blame everything else on everybody. Come on, somebody. 2020 was a test. The test. And I'm here to tell you today, and I'm going to preach Matthew chapter 25, but I believe in my spirit, let everything bear witness with the spirit of the Lord and the leadership of the house of God, but Ozark, you have passed the test in the name of the Lord. And the greatest, day, there are a lot of things that preachers can say and evangelists can say to come and pump you up and make you feel good, but I truly believe in my heart the greatest days of this church are ahead because you passed the test, you were found faithful, even when you didn't understand the pit, even when you didn't understand what was going on, God is going to do some miraculous things. He's going to give you a voice in the community. He's going to give you a voice in the community, says the Lord. Even as our brother that went through the test, Joseph was put in a place, in a position, in a palace. Then when he could have brought judgment against his own, instead he said, all the testing was for this moment. You thought it was something else, but God put me where he put me that I can minister and save my family. A whole generation, 70 of his family members were saved. 70 members, somebody's been praying for it. Get ready, test, this test shall pass. Come on, somebody. Get ready for the palace. To walk in grace and mercy and love. You receive that, say amen. Amen. Anybody, anybody been through a test, say amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I've been through a test. Amen. Matthew chapter 25. I love this story from the Word of God. As I was coming down the highway today. You don't want to be speeding on 231 today, Melissa. <laughs> Sister Jones. <laughs> there was so many police officers out. I was doing speed limit, thank the Lord. Matthew 25, you ready for the word? It says, The kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with them. But while the bridegroom was delayed... Anybody ever feel like, Jesus, I sure thought you'd have come back by now. Come on, say a strong amen. I remember when I was just a teenager, 13 years old, I literally sitting in Brother Jimmy Nyland's Sunday school class thought, I will never see graduation. I knew Jesus was coming in night before 1980. Come on, somebody help me. And yet we're still here. All the older saints said, Brother Jim, you know what I'm talking about, say amen. We're still here. It seems like there has been a delay. But I think things are warming up and ready and ripe for his return. Church, Jesus is coming. If you don't hear anything else today, I want it to resonate in every person's mind, their heart in this room today. Everyone who's watching on the internet, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is about to return for his bride. He hasn't forgot his church and he's coming back. Let it be shouted from the rooftop, Jesus is a coming in the midst of everything that's going on. He's coming. It seemed, he said it seemed like there was a delay. And they all summoned and slept. And at midnight the cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. 
But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but rather go to those who sell and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open up to us. And he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Verse 13, to the church. He said, watch therefore. For you do not know the, neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Father, this is your word. It is anointed. It does not come back void. It accomplishes that which it's sent forth to do. It's like a rock that crushes. It is your word, dear God, that cuts down deep inside of us. And it divides the soul from the spirit. It puts to death our man of flesh and allows the spirit of God to be nurtured and grow into the image of Christ Jesus. So, Father, today, Jesus, the incarnate word, come alive in us. and Remind us today that you're coming for your church in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. In that day, Jesus told this parable, but it was based on the traditions of the day. And still some places practice this in the Middle East region. A young man would come and he would go and he would say, Hey, I found this young lady and she's uh, looking good and fine and I want to marry her. Kind of like Scotty. (laughs) I'll never forget out in my backyard by the campsite, he came and said, Pastor Ben, I'd like to take your daughter's hand and so forth. He did a real good job. And I pulled out my buck knife. No. (laughs) Of course, I said, yeah. And that still happens today. And Jesus knew the tradition of the day. And so he instructed. He said, well, I want you. Yes, you can. He had to, Scotty would have to pay a bride price for Melissa. Today it's an engagement ring and many other things, everything you got. Come on, somebody. (laughs) And so, um, he would go away, and he would prepare a place for them to live. Just, just a side note, ladies, if a man ain't got a job and a place to live and still up in the house with a mama, look out, it may not be the best place to go. <laughs> and all you daddy said, I'm not saying it can't be, but he went, and, it's a biblical pattern. He went and prepared, and he couldn't just go on his own and do it. Melissa had said, okay, we're gone. We'll see you later. We're going to Gatlinburg. Come on. No. He had to go and prepare a place, and the father said, it's time to go get your bride. And so at the appropriate time, he would go to get the bride. While Scotty was gone, in Jesus' day, the, bridegroom was requi- the gr- uh, bride-to-be was required to wear a mask. Never did I think I'd understand that. Come on, somebody. <laughs> had to wear a mask in public. It signified to everybody else I'm taken. I'm not for sale. Come on, somebody, help me today. I'm not for sale. I will not compromise. There's somebody who already calls me the groom to be. I am already headed to a marriage. Amen. Ready to get married. And so we must live in such a way of holiness before the Lord while we tarry and wait for the groom to come. Church, may we be found waiting and watching and ready Walking in holiness, there is thing, a thing still called holiness that we must walk out. A daily dying to ourselves that when he returns, we will be found ready. We'll be found ready with our lamps trimmed, our oil ready and prepared. And so when the call goes out, we respond immediately. I'm afraid there's too many people in the church world today. And I say that generally, the, world, the world's church, if you will, that think they're ready and they wear a label that says, I'm a Christian, but they are not a Christ follower. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Say amen. It's one thing to come to church and really be dedicated and commit, tithe, paying, filled with the Holy Spirit, loving, kind, compassionate, worker in the house of God. You know the things of God, and you're in fellowship with the body of Christ and under the submission of your new pastor that will come. Isn't it great to have a pastor? Come on, somebody. Know you're longing for your pastor. That's God's order. 
It's his order for the man of God to come. He won't be like me. He won't be like Brother Greg. He won't be like nobody else because God made him just the way he is. Come on, somebody. Follow him in unity in the house of the Lord. That's all extra. Come on, somebody. He said, I want you to be ready. I want you to be watching. I want you to be involved in the body of Christ. And I believe that describes Ozark Assembly of God Church. Come on, somebody. Engaged. You that may be on the peripheral, you're watching. Come on. Get in and be faithful in the name of the Lord. It's the greatest thing on planet. The local church. Can I get a strong amen, church? He said, I want you to be watching and ready. Melissa had to wear that veil. The church has to wear it. There's a distinction about us. There's something different about us in the marketplace. We don't act like just anybody else. There's something, there's an anointing, there's an ointment, there's a smell, there's a power. There's something different about the Holy Spirit-filled body of Christ. We live different. We walk live different. We talk different. We don't get involved in all the affairs and political stuff. And I understand that we do speak to some of those things. But we don't do as everyone else does. Because there's something about our lives and walks and expectation that the King of kings and the Lord of lords is about to come and receive us. And so we're different. And when that day came and the Father said it's time. And old church, hear me. That day is approaching fast. And our Father will say it's time. It's time. No man knows the day nor the hour. Anybody that ever says they do know and set a date to it, they're in heresy. Come on, somebody. It's not true. It's not word of God. But that day will come when the Father will say, Jesus, Son, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, shall return. In that day, back in the days, Scotty's best man, he'd go with him. Could have been at midnight. Brother Smith, it could have been at midnight. That's why she had to have her lamp ready. Melissa had to have it trimmed and ready at any time. In, su- in, in such a time and place and hour as you think not, the Son of Man will come. When you least expect it, somebody hear me this morning, Jesus is going to come. Jesus has come. You, we have no time for distractions. We have no time to be all caught up in the affairs of mankind. We must be focused in the last days and hours like never before on what the Word of God says and has instructed for us to do. Be watching and be ready. Have our lamps filled and ready for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When Scotty gets close, to his best man would yell out, Behold, the bridegroom cometh! Church family, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 declares, It declares one of the greatest passages. He said, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, about those who have fallen asleep or passed away. He said, I don't want you to be unaware, uninformed. He said, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a voice, with a trumpet of God. It ain't the trump of our archangel. It's a trumpet call of God himself. It shall wake the dead, and the voice of the archangel shall shout forth, and it shall awaken, it shall call forth the bride of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Are you ready to meet Him today? Are you ready? Are your, are your robes spotless, and are they ready? It's so easy to get lulled to sleep. Anybody with me? Come on, somebody help me. J- Judges chapter 16, it tells of a story of a powerful man of God. A powerful man of God that was used mightily in Israel. His name was Samson. Samson had strength and power. You know the story. Kill, I mean, I'm talking a man that could rip a line in two. A man that was anointed by God. And he began to flirt around with this old gal. Come on somebody. Named Delilah. Delilah began to sweet talk him. Delilah began to whisper in the ear. And he always had strength to break loose. He always had a strength to say no. He always had a strength to jump jump up and break new vines and break little cords. He always had enough strength to absolutely shake himself. Shake himself and prepare and come back from where he was being compromised. And once again feel the anointing and power of God. One of the saddest scriptures in in the word of God. Judges chapter 20, if you'll turn there. Listen to what it says. 
It says, and then Delilah, she lulled him to sleep. What's rocking you like a little baby in a cradle? What has the enemy brought into your little life? What Delilah has he brought in that's taking you away from the things of God? Maybe just some little bitty thing, but it could be a literal little seed that grows. It'll never happen to me. How many men and women have ever said that? You think Samson said, I, I'll just lose it and... You, th you think he really thought the tragedy in his life would come? Not on your life. Little by little he yielded to his flesh and what he felt. And the next thing we know, he's absolutely in a position he never thought he would get there. Oh, Delilah lulled him to sleep on her knees and called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. I wish I had time to preach on that. Church family, I believe that went back to his covenant and his distinction. Church family, we are, we are a church of the power of the Holy Spirit of God. The manifested giftings and flowing of the anointing of God in the house and out of the house, in the marketplace. May we still be and may it be a distinction about the Pentecostal church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That we are saved, filled with the Holy Spirit of God that causes us to bear witness to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And gives us a power and giftings to be absolutely a distinct people in a dark world. May we not ever compromise the moving of the Holy Ghost. A lot of churches that are doing it. A lot of churches in the name of being seeker friendly and trying to reach more people. And I get it. I understand trying to be, reach more people. But it is the Holy Spirit of God that draws all men to Christ. Can I get a strong amen? It's the moving of the Holy Spirit of God. Shaved off his distinction. And she began to torment, the scripture says, him and his strength left him. And she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. And she, so he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before and at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Spirit of the Lord had departed him. What a sad place. I believe there's places... I'm not standing in judgment, but I believe there's places, house of gods, people who call themselves Christian denomination, they don't even know that the Spirit of the Lord has departed. Church family, I am so thankful for this house. Every time I've ever been here, I felt his presence. Come on, somebody. Seen Pastor Scotty yield a few minutes ago for the moving of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah, a thousand times over. Can I get a strong amen? May we yield. May we not be lulled to sleep. He said, I'll shake myself just like I always have been. I've done in the past. I'll shake myself once again. It's going to be okay. Nothing bad's going to happen to me. I can still do whatever it is that I want to do. And I, I can shake myself and everything. Grace, grace, grace will continue to cover me. Grace and mercy will continue to flow to me. Now think about the prophet Jonah. Jonah came and he preached in Nineveh and he didn't even want to. He preached and he went through the city and revival for three days. The whole entire city got saved. His enemies got saved. Turned to God. What a revival. Come on, somebody. One hundred years later, prophet Nahum come. He come into town. You know what his message was? It's because of Nineveh, the people of God that had changed been changed by the power of God, slid right back into sleep and debauchery and wickedness. It came upon him, and prophet Nahum came with a different message. He said, your time is up. Read it yourself. He said, your time is up. It's over. Church family, I'm very concerned about America. Can I, say, can I get amen? Great revivals in the 1700s. 
Great Awakening, 1700s, 1800s, Pentecost in the early 1900s. God's been so merciful and poured out His Spirit upon a great land. How much more patience will He have in long-suffering? Think about it. I believe there is a day coming where wickedness shall abound. I think we're close. And the prophet Nahum, the men and women of God across this nation are warning the people, Jesus is coming. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, reminding the church that I am coming back and it won't be long. They gouged out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They gouged out his vision. Where people yield to compromise, they are a people that will be scattered because they have no vision and they have no word. It is imperative. Man, I am so excited that you guys get to eat y'all sweet. Brother Daniel, you get to eat your sweets tomorrow because you've been fasting, church. Come on, somebody. A people that do not want to have dull sight but want to hear the voice of God. Can I get a strong amen? Don't allow it to happen. Don't be rocked to sleep even as Samson was. That's not the end of the story because his hair began to grow again. Some people in here, you say, man, I found myself today, or somebody watching, I find myself in a place way away from God. I'm going tomorrow to a certain city to see someone who once every day read this book with me, filled with the Holy Ghost. We fasted so many meals together, it's not funny. We prayed and sang and worship five days a week. That's the truth. And they're so backslidden away from God. How does that happen? I don't want it to happen to me. It's somehow we begin to listen to the voices, stresses, and pressures of life. And we slip into a sleep. And the enemy rocks us until we begin to compromise. Come on, anybody with me? And our flesh takes over. I do not want that to happen to me or you in the house of the Lord. But that's not the end of the story because that person I'm seeing, his hair can begin to grow again. He is a God of grace and a God of mercy. He's a God that will take you right where you're at today. And all the power of the living God can cleanse you, wash you, fill you, and change your life in the name of the Lord. That is the hope that we have that's founded in Christ. Church family, Jesus is coming. He's not coming for a church of compromise. He's not coming for a lukewarm church. He's not coming for a church that's, that's garment is spotted and wrinkled. Is that the truth? Come on, somebody help me. He's coming for a church that's saved by the mercy and grace of God. The grace and mercies of God that cleanses us. Our righteousness is as what? Filthy rags. I thank God it's not about what I can do, but it is about the grace and the mercies of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. One of the tricks of the enemy, we get so busy and so distracted. I don't know about you, but I quit watching uh, um, Fox News and I, I never hardly ever watched CNN, but I just had to turn it all off. I had to just turn it all off because I get so tired of it. I can become so distracted by the stuff that's going around until it takes me away from what God's wanting to speak to me. I can get so much in the Facebook and so much in Instagram and so much in all the things that are drawing my attention and voices and friendships and parties and ball and this and everything else until it robs me of my quiet time and my place with God. Come on. It takes me away from him wanting to speak to me. To, t to absolutely come down and transform and change me. Church family, the enemy is as a master of coming in and throwing up distractions to get our attention on the storms. And the, my Lord, what's going to happen? We're going to have a job. We're going to have a country. We're going to have... So confused and distorted and distracted that is a trick of the evil one. Come on, somebody. Instead, our attention should be fixed on somebody else. His name is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He's coming for a bride that's spotless, cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, ready, filled with the Holy Spirit of God, empowered by the Spirit of God, so critically important. A bride that is tried and purified, ready, 
filled with the Spirit, focused on Him, His our eyes fixed on the Lordship of Jesus Christ and about His business. We must not be about us, ours, and our own, and our 401s, and our bank accounts, and let's protect right here. Let's just hunker down. No, we, the church of the Lord and Savior, under the new leadership, must again continue to reach out to this community, and those that are in darkness, and see salvation come to Ozark, Alabama. Can I get an amen? amen? Critically important. In the name of Christ. Turn to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Do you get anything out of this? Say amen. 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 Mark chapter 10. It says this right here. And church family, I, I encourage you to be doing. Be found doing when Jesus comes. Mark 10. And now they came to Jericho and they went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude and a great multitude. Blind at Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, Set by a road begging, and when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, and, but he cried out all the more. I'm glad we got a Savior that doesn't mind us crying out. Doesn't matter what time it is, doesn't matter if we're all alone, he hears our cry. I want hear, somebody, everybody right here, he hears your cry. Nobody else, the deacons, the pastor, nobody else seems to care. Somebody watching, you don't think nobody cares at this church? That's a lie. Come on, somebody. This church is filled with people that love. The enemy tricks us into into trying to isolate us and think nobody else cares. There is people in the house of the Lord right here at Ozark Assembly of God Church that love the Lord and love you. Can I get an amen? But there's times in our life when we feel lonely and isolated. We feel like nobody cares. I get that. And it's times that we can cry out to God, and I promise you that He will hear us. Many, they, then many warned him to be quiet, be quiet. But he, there's, a, there's a voice right now trying to shut down and quiet the church, by the way. Hello? Don't be caught unaware. Don't, don't think it's some, don't be distracted by it or overcome by it. There is an all-out attempt to shut down and quiet the voice behind this pulpit. But it never shall take place in the name of the Lord. Because the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. In these last days, it is the church body, those that are sitting around you, you better get to know because it is those that you will need to lean on. That's not just some preacher talking, it's the truth. You better, be in, you better be in with the body of Christ, these small groups, these gathering, these men, men. Oh, I love your men coming down in the name of the Lord. Coming down to worship God. It's those kind of people that you're going to need in the last days. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. And something happened in an obscure town. Jesus is coming out of Jericho, We're going to spend the night in Bethany, headed to Jerusalem. Brother Smith, I, y'all, y'all got one of the greatest diamonds in all the assemblies of God in this house. I don't know if you know it or not. Come on, somebody. Let him know how much you love him. <clears throat> A man of faithfulness. and Y'all know, I'll be quiet. But Jesus is entering into one of the hardest... Weeks any man could ever face. Hosanna! Hosanna! Woo! You're the man. In just a few days, there would be nobody standing next to him. All alone. Beaten beyond recognition as a man. Treated like the lowest scum of the earth. Forsaken by all. Is that the truth? Say amen. And he knew what was ahead of him. To be beat with a cat of nine, 39 stripes. Rip the flesh from his body. If you looked at him, you could not, the scripture says, even know who he was. We always have these little things, a little trickle of blood. No, 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 no. We don't want to put that picture up in church. 
and he bled and died on an old rugged cross. He knew what he was about to do and face for us. And he's leaving Jericho one week before. You don't think it crossed his mind where he was headed? You don't think he could have been distracted in his mind? You knew a week from now you're going into chemotherapy and heart surgery and this and that. And you know that your life is going to potentially end. I promise you it would be easy to be distracted. When Jesus is walking down the road in some obscure little town. He walks in with a crowd around him. People calling his disciples because, man, he was the man. He, in fact, was going to be the king of the Jews to set up his kingdom on earth. That's what some of them thought. And we get to walk with a man. Secret church, like you guys around here, got all them things in your ears. I wouldn't want, if you're out there, don't come to this church try to do nothing. Come on, somebody. Church family. They were proud of who they were. The son of God that opens blinded eyes and deaf hear. The dead come to life. The son of God walking through town and they're all around him. And something amazing happens. Something incredible happens to me. Jesus hears the voice, one voice, of one person crying out, Jesus, son of day, a blind beggar. Some thought may even be cursed by God of his day. An unwanted, separate, keep them away from us. Be quiet. Those Pharisees and even disciples, those closest, shh, shh. We got business. We got an inauguration to go to. That's what they thought. And the Bible says he heard the blind Bartimaeus' cry. And he stopped in his tracks. Of all the stresses, of all the pressure, of all the things that was before him, the Son of God stopped in his tracks because he heard the voice crying out of somebody that truly needed help and believe. It wasn't just Jesus. It was Jesus, Son of David, which indicated from that man's heart, you, I do believe that you are the true Messiah from God that has come. I believe in you and I, God, here, somebody listening in this house or listening by video today, I'm telling you today, God will stop in his track. He will come by your neighborhood and visit your living room and he hears your cry in the name of the Lord. Somebody give him praise in the house. He hears you. He hears you. He hears you. And he will stop. Not only will you hear and stop and stop, but he will respond. There's a lot of people that can hear. And a lot of people that know stuff that's going on in somebody's life. And they'll even take time maybe to stop and listen to what's going on. But it's a whole nother level to carry it to the next level of responding to it. Of being a Christ follower. You take the badge and throw it away. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. I said all that to say this. We must be found before Jesus returns doing what he has asked us to do. We must be in the marketplace ready to hear. To stop our busyness and respond to what the spirit of the Lord leads us to do. Come on somebody help me. Are you hearing the voices around you? I'm not talking about some craziness. Come on, somebody. There are people everywhere crying out for help. There are people everywhere around you in Walmart and everywhere else. I believe there are divine appointments almost every day. If we will but walk in the Spirit, I believe God will show us people that are hurting and need a touch from God. We must listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We must respond. I'm in church service sitting. And a young lady about Melissa's age, maybe a little bit younger, right around that age. Beautiful young lady. I think I shared this story, but I remembered it today. 
I felt like I needed to share it. She's sitting over there, and God told me three things about her. I'm sitting over here, and church is going on, and I said, okay, God, and we just got off a 21 day of fasting and prayer. Come on, somebody. You just got off a season of prayer and fasting, so don't think it's strange when the voice of the Holy Spirit starts speaking. Then stop what you're doing and respond. Holy Spirit spoke to me, and I said, okay, Lord, and I'll tell her, and I'll go over there. Yeah, I'll do it, God, when I get a chance and make it the appropriate time. And I was doing everything in my power to beep, beep, back out of it. Come on, somebody. Service was over, and I went to pray for people at the altar, and and I did that and cleaned up the Kleenexes and did everything I was supposed to do as a good staff member and looked up and the young lady was gone. Well, I guess I just missed it this time. Just missed it. and Went around locking doors and doing everything and went to the next building. And guess who was coming out the door? Come on. She came out and I, just, I said, ma'am, I need to talk to you. I looked her in the eyes. She ne- I never met her. She never met me beautiful young lady and I was so awkward with me but I said God God's just looking for somebody to be obedient to what he wants to do if we'll be obedient God will do the rest do you trust him will you trust him when he speaks to stop and respond you want me to give five what you want me to do what with my money you, you want me to do what to my enemy God, they've treated me so bad. God, I could go on with that, that a little bit. You want me to go to my brother or sister who did what to my family? You want me to go to my ex? God, you, what? They got COVID over there, God. You want me to do what? Come on, somebody. I want to trust God. Before Dr. Fauci and anybody else, I'm trusting him. I'm going to use common sense for the record. And so I said, ma'am, I said two things about her employment and this and that and why she was down there in a brand new day. And the third thing I looked at her and I said, and God wants you to know that he wants to heal you when you were abused sexually as a child. You better hear from God when you go say something like that. And she never cracked a smile or any expression. And I finished and I just said, that's what I needed to tell you, ma'am, miss. She said, okay. Turned around and walked off. You talk about it. Oh, God, what did I just do? You begin to question yourself. Come on, somebody. Next day, I'm in my office, my wife, my secretary. She said, "Um, Sister Iris Fulton's on the phone. I said, oh, good. Hey, Sister Iris. How you doing, girl? How you doing? How's your, your husband doing? You know, uh, good. She said, Pastor Ben, I need to talk to you. I said, okay, go ahead. She said, I had a friend come into town and gave her name and said, and she, you talked to her yesterday after church. And I went, Bloop. I said, yeah, big man of faith and power here, right? I said, yes, ma'am, I did. And she said, well, I need to talk to you about some things you said. And I'm going, Lord, please, please, please. <laughs> And she said, we've been up all night long, and my friend has been totally delivered. There's no way anybody on the face of the earth could have known anything that you were talking about. And she's been delivered by the power of God. Well, pastor, that's how God uses great pastors and your new pastor. That's why we hired him. <laughs> Come on. I don't, we don't want no hireling in this house. We want a man of God. Church family. Church family. It's not just for the deacons and the pastors. It's for the entire body of Christ that's spirit filled. To go out those doors and even in here. And feel a prompting. Well he don't ever speak to me. Are you fasting? If you will fast and pray. He will speak to you. You saints of God that have been around the block a while, do you think what I just said was biblical? Give me an amen. Amen. He'll speak. He'll lead. He'll guide you. I'm in the hospital, Mobile Infirmary in Mobile, Alabama. Just came off of prayer and fasting. Everybody say prayer and fasting. I'm sitting there and ministering to Vermel Cochran. Lady laying in the bed. 
lady in the nurse RN. I'd seen a stethoscope around her neck from my peripheral. Two visions I've had in my life, and this is one of them. I seen a guy driving a tractor trailer truck and had a look on his face and cactus and tumbleweeds and these birds and fowls were coming at him and it was just one of those distorted, terrible, horrible things. And all of a sudden I came back to myself, if you will. I don't know how all that happened, but I just, man, I, I came out of that. I turned to a lady I'd never met before in my entire life and said, ma'am, you got to be spirit led. You got to hear, stop, and what? Respond. And I turned to this lady and I said, ma'am, I said, I don't know you, but do you have a son that's an 18-wheeler truck driver out in the Midwest right now? He's hooked on drugs and he f she fell on her knees in the hospital floor and began to boo-hoo like a baby. And the power of God came into that, that, that uh, hospital room. Come on, somebody. I don't know the rest of that story. I just know I had to be obedient. And what if you're in Walmart in Ozark this week? the ballpark, school, and the Holy Spirit says, Scotty, Scotty, give your father-in-law a thousand dollars. Work on a baby. <laughs> what if he says, your son that's been away from God in the pig pit, pig pen, today's the day. I've tried a million times, God. That old neighbor, that boss manor, today, that person dying of cancer, they're already planning the funeral. I wish he could have been there when Sister Lois Barnhill walked in. The pastor's out in the hallway planning the funeral with the family. Funeral home, service. Sit the lowest bar in here, woman of God. <whistles> A woman that's in tune with God and hears the voice of the Lord. Oh, I love those kind of people. Sometimes I don't like them because they tell me just what I don't want to hear. She walks into the room. He walks into the room. <laughs> That person got out of that bed that next morning completely, totally healed by the power of God. Yes. Pastor, you think that could happen with me? If you love Jesus and will come, that song y'all sang, mm, it's all about him. Just need more of him. It's him. If that will be your prayer, the Spirit of God will flow through you. Will you be found doing? I'm not talking about just tithing. Tithing's good. If you're not tithing, you ought to tithe. Please, you're robbing, you're robbing God. So tithe in the name of the Lord. Do the things that are obvious. But are we doing the things that are very difficult to do at times? Are we loving people that we don't like? Are we bringing words to people when it is difficult to do so? The Bible says Jesus stood still. He heard. He stood still. He responded in the name of the Lord. He called him. He said, come on over here. The man left everything behind. And that day his life was transformed forever while he was on the face of the earth. I, I can hear stories now that happened from this body. Not the pastor. The church is not going to grow just because a pastor comes. It's going to grow because the body of Christ is doing the works of ministry. Everywhere. Hands extended, feet extended by the power of the living God. He's looking to use somebody in this house. He wants to use the body of Christ in the name of the Lord. Are you, are you going to be found doing when Jesus comes? I close with a story. Um, I... Um, it was reminded of it today on the way down of Noah. Noah preached. He preached, I think it was 120 years. Didn't have time to look it up. But he preached. Started building a big old boat. He's crazy. Brother Smith, biblically, historically, he's crazy, isn't he? Why in the world are you doing that? 
you're building a big old boat out here where there's no, what in the world? Ship. Giant. There's no floods. There, there's nothing like that. Ever, ain't never been that way. Some believe it's never even rained. So what are you doing, Noah? Come on, get on board. You got to come on, come on. What? Year after year after year, decade after decade. He's coming. It's, it's coming. It's coming. You got to get ready. It's coming. I heard it all my life, Brother Smith. I'm preaching to Brother Smith a lot today. <laughs> you can preach to men that you know that are, help you. I preached it all my life. He's coming. But it's easy to forget. It's easy to forget that one day the trumpet's going to sound. I may never see a grandbaby. He's coming. And the door shall be shut. Open for us, the five foolish virgins said. Open for us, my Lord, please, oh, sir, come on back, preacher. Why didn't you tell us? You have been a Christian all your life, and why didn't you tell us? Why didn't you care? Didn't you see I was out of church? door shut it's too late I don't know if they could have heard on the other side of the boat wall wails and screaming open it up five foolish virgins open it up open it give me another chance I'm glad he's given me multiple chances come on somebody so glad for his grace and mercy but there's a day coming it will be too late ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Peter said yeah we heard it all slack for his coming we heard it all before your forefathers and everybody else and yeah 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 we're just tired of hearing it church family he's coming he's coming Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is coming. And we must be found faithful, alert, and doing our eyes fixed on the finish line. He's the author and the perfecter of our faith. And we've got to finish this race. May we be found doing the work of the Lord. There's been a time or two in 2020. No time to be distracted now. I don't care how old you are or how young. There's a work for us to do. There's a work. Fill these pews in small groups. Start you some Bible studies approved by the church leadership. Go after people like never before. Get your young people in the youth group. Bring your children to the house of God. Do outreaches like you've never done. Intentional outreaches to win people to Christ. See them discipled and filled with the power of God. Anointing of God flow in the marketplace. May there be testimony after testimony of what God has done through you in the house of the Lord in the marketplace we were sitting at the t-ball game and God told me to do something and I went out there and the whole t-ball team gave their heart to Jesus the whole hunting club all the men put their beers down and all of them gave their heart to Jesus it can happen in the name of the Lord will you let him use you will you let him use you therefore since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight, every distraction, every hindrance, every memory, everything of the past, every sin, everything that's wood, hay, and stubble. Fill in the blank. And the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto, the, unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, whose is joy? 
It is us, the body of Christ, the bride. He did it for us. He endured the cross, despising its shame. He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And he's making intercession for you and for I, for, for me. May we finish the race and finish it strong in Jesus' name. You received the word this morning. Bow your head, if you don't mind, in the house of the Lord. You're here today, watching my video. You're not where you should be. You're not where you should be. There is a Savior who came to tell me he's going to stop. He hears you. He's stopping. And he can save you of your sins today. He can cleanse your heart today. 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 Watching this video, there's a, there's a screen that's there. There's a number to call. Somebody will get with you from this church. They love you. They care for you so much. You need to be a part of a church family. This is a great place in the Ozark area. You're here today and you say, Pastor Vin, I need Jesus. I know I'm not living like I should be. And I know that if he came back today, I don't know that I'm ready like I need to be in my heart. There's question. If that's you, today's your day. Don't you dare walk out the doors not responding. Please. Be a wise person and say, that's me. Would you lift your hand real quick? Right up, right down. Right up, right down. Put it up and down. Amen. Right up and right down. God sees your hand. Doesn't matter if I see it or not. What matters is God sees your hand. He sees your heart. You put it down. Right up and right down. Right up and right down. Anybody else? Anybody else? Say, that's me, Pastor. You're talking to me today. I want to know Jesus today. 